All right, we're continuing the issue series, and we're in Corinthians. Let me give you a little more background of Corinth. So Corinth was a very wealthy and um, uh, heavily populated uh, society or city, and it was in the center of two ports. So you had a lot of sailors, a lot of commerce going on there. Now, the main goddess that was worshipped in Corinth was Aphrodite, which is the goddess of love. So, it was known for its sexual promiscuity. And secondly, there was a cult very active in Corinth, and it originated from Egypt. And it was actually called the Cult of Isis. No, not, of course, the Isis of today, but there was a cult back then called Isis, and it was known for its focus on wisdom, man's wisdom, ability to have wisdom. So Corinth was a very busy, active community of wealthy and poor people. A lot of Jews had been brought, you know, had, had come there because they were kicked out of different areas, and so there was a lot of refugees in that area. And promiscuity, again, is the main thing that Paul is going to be addressing in Corinth. And um, the comparing of one another and who's, you know, seems to be the better speaker than the other had crept into the church. Now, we are called to be the church. We're called to be separate from the world, not like the world. And so we're called to be holy. And now we're to, we who are in the world are brand new creatures in Christ Jesus. So we got to repent and turn away from the things of the world and who we once were in the world and now turn to who we now are in Christ. And we're completely different people. Our spiritual life is completely different than our carnal life. We're no longer carnal beings. We're spiritual beings. So with that understanding, let's go here into 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We left off going through chapter 1 yesterday, and that was entitled Hollywood Christianity. Now, this one is entitled Wisdom from Above. That's what Paul is addressing here in 2 Corinthians 2, is where is our source of wisdom? Paul came to the Corinth, and though he was a well-educated scholar himself, he could have competed with these scholars in Corinth and had public debates and 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 impressed people and showed how wise and smart he is and crazy that sometimes that is in the church that there are and go to where that's like the prevailing attitude like who can preach better than the other who has this special revelation deep wisdom but Paul said I spoke simple I just spoke on Christ crucified simple truth, which would seem foolishness to those of the world, but for those who are open to salvation, it was the power of salvation. Simple truth, Christ crucified. He knew the culture that he was in, and he was not going to go along with that same prevailing culture. He would go opposite. He would do the way things the way of the kingdom. So he just simple spoke simple truth. Christ crucified. So he wouldn't be like lifted up with all the other great scholars of that land and compared one another. He just simply spoke truth. And so we got to be careful as well. We got to know our audience. See, this audience of Corinth, they were new. This was new truth being brought to them. Paul said that to those who are mature, I go, he speaks in deeper revelation. He goes into the deeper things of God. So we got to know, you know, when we're speaking amongst immature believers, we got to keep it simple. But Paul said that even when he speaks in a mature manner, the wisdom that he is bringing forth is not from himself. The wisdom is from God. So he cannot boast. We cannot boast in what we've received from God. It is through the power of the Holy Spirit that wisdom comes forth, not through our own intellect, no matter how long we've studied, what degrees we got, even Bible degrees, whatever truth that comes forth that transforms lives is from 
God, he is the source. And so he alone can get the glory. He alone. So know your audience. And you know what makes a great speaker? Of course, a, a, a believer, what makes a great Christian communicator is not how well they speak per se. Number one, that the words they, they say truly are from God. How can you know it? Because you feel it inside of you. It's a sharper than two-edged sword. You, can, you feel it. It brings conviction. It brings repentance. It, you can feel this work going on inside of you. That's how you know the words are from God. Secondly, what makes a great communicator, because if God is speaking through us, he knows how to reach his audience more than we do how to reach them. So we just got to trust him. And God doesn't want just hearers of his word. He wants doers. So a great communicator has the ability not just to speak well, but how, but the ability to get people to not just hear, but do. Act. Action is what it's all about. How successful we are as speakers is how we can get people to move, to act on what they've heard. That is most important. We could have crowds of thousands, but if they're not acting on what they're hearing, it oppresses no, it surely doesn't impress God. It might impress people because that's how our nation's all, you know, our culture. It's all about how big of a crowd you can get. But what really matters is how many disciples we can make, how many people become true followers of Christ Jesus. In second, in 1 Corinthians 2 here, it says, eye is not seen, ear is not heard. What God has planned for those who love him. The knowledge we receive is way above what we could ever figure out on our own. It's beyond reasoning. It's wisdom from God from above. And so that's my heart and my prayer is that what I speak, what I share comes from God, not from myself, not from how well I studied, how well I prepared. I prepare, I study, but I want God to be the one speaking through me. I just want to be his oracle, his, his mouthpiece. And so I hope that God's word has touched you today and that you've been impacted God bless you. Remember, wisdom comes from above. If you seek God, you will gain wisdom. Have a great day. God bless you.